There was a time, America, when the Democrats thought physical and mental health of a president were of national security importance. Jamie the Marxist Raskin used to think that. In fact, he said it in 2017 as he was trying to destroy the presidency of Donald Trump. For example, cut 11, Mr. Producer, go. To set up a permanent body, not just for this presidency, but for all presidencies to come. The physical health of the president, the mental health of the president, is something of fundamental importance to the national security of the country and the continuing effectiveness of the government. So I think that, uh, you know, some of the current events have concentrated our mind on the problem, but we need to set this up as a matter of uh, institutional responsibility as Congress. Oh, really? This guy is such a sleazeball. That's right, you're a sleazeball. And I want to give a hat tip to Representative Mike Lawler. Janet Yellen was at a hearing today, the so-called Secretary of the Treasury. And he is the first one, at least publicly, as far as I know, to ask the critical question. Cut one, go. Madam Secretary, have there been any discussions among cabinet secretaries about invoking the 25th Amendment? No. No. No, I'm going to continue to push this issue, ladies and gentlemen, because this is an issue that deserves attention, serious attention. And uh, this is not good enough. So there hasn't been a single discussion among cabinet members, and of course Kamala Harris, as the theory of the absurd with a president who's dementia-ridden And we keep following the Democrats. Who's for, who's against? Who's against, who's for? Seriously. And so is this going to be the discussion for the rest of the time now? Until the Democrats decide? Well, one would hope not, but I think at least for a while. Um... But the Democrats want to make sure, no matter what, no matter who they run, that they will win. From the blaze. 10% of illegal aliens admit they're registered to vote. Heritage Foundation survey. Candace Hathaway. Investigation uncovers threat to election integrity. A survey conducted by the Heritage Foundation's oversight project found that 10% of illegal aliens and non-citizens stated that they're registered to vote in the upcoming election. They said they are. And, of course, they're provided with every opportunity, aren't they? In a video posted to X on July 4th, Mike Howell, the Oversight Project's executive director, stated, My fellow Americans, today we're calling on all of you to declare independence from foreigners deciding our elections. The evidence you're about to see relates to illegal aliens being registered to vote. This is a problem if it national in scale, the United States of America is for Americans, and our elections are only should be decided by Americans. Muckraker.com reported that it interviewed dozens of individuals residing at a Charlotte, North Carolina apartment complex primarily occupied by illegal aliens. A hidden camera captured several interviews with residents who claimed to be non-citizens, but who registered to vote. We come with a group, an organization that is trying to help register Hispanic people to vote because in a few months we will be voting for governor or president. The interviewees told them Anthony Rubin, the founder of Muckraker, explained we visited the apartment complex to ask residents two questions. Are you registered to vote and are you a citizen? Shockingly, four of the 41 people we asked confirmed that they were non-citizen and registered to vote. If this proportion holds true nationwide, the integrity of the 2024 election is in jeopardy. And then you're asked, if you go to court, can you prove it? Can you prove what? We don't have the names of these tens of thousands of people, the locations. We We don't have access to the kind of information you need to provide for evidence in a court. This is a whole scam. It's a sham. The whole thing's a setup. During an interview on Real America's Voice, the war room, Hal stated, 
The borders have been wide open. We've been told by the left and the mainstream media that poses no threat to the integrity of our election system. We've been told that it's a conspiracy theory. And he noted in a report containing the survey's findings that it was sent to states, governors, and attorneys general. And I'm sure most of them did absolutely nothing with it. Absolutely nothing. So this is uh, ongoing. It is ubiquitous. And this is why I also reported in the blaze, Julio Rosas. Biden comes out against voter ID bill that prevents illegal immigrants from voting. Now, you got to blow off the media and these phony judges and former attorneys. I don't don't see any. uh, I don't see any fraud here. I'm not aware of any uh, fraud in particular. I told them if you have it, bring it to me. Okay. Biden White House further blamed Republicans for the border crisis. Here we are talking about voter ID laws. The Biden regime officially came out to say officials do not support House Republicans' proposal to have a voter ID law for elections to prevent illegal immigrants from voting as the border crisis has gone on for the entirety of Biden's presidency. Introduced by Congressman Chip Roy, the Safeguard America Voter Eligibility Act, or the SAFE Act, would require states to obtain proof of citizenship in person when registering an individual to vote and require states to remove anyone who is in the country illegally from existing voter rolls. Wow, that's controversial. So why would the Democrat Party, every single member, oppose it in the House and Senate and their nitwit president say that he would, in fact, veto it? There's no legitimate objection unless your goal here, and it's not legitimate, is in fact to enshrine illegality and fraud and make it impossible to prove a negative in a court of law. Radical progressive Democrats are using open border policies while also attacking election integrity laws to fundamentally remake America. That's why I'm proud to introduce the SAVE Act with Speaker Johnson and my Republican colleagues, along with the invaluable support of citizens and organizations that recognize we must end the practice of non-citizens voting in our country. Now, the Biden regime said the bill is not needed since there's already a law in the books disallowing non-citizens to vote and that requiring voter ID will hinder Americans from voting. And then the statement goes on to blame the House Republicans for not voting for the Senate bill and the usual crap. There is no federal law that requires voter ID at the point of voting. None. This has been a slow process now where they have actually completed the race across the finish line that started under Bill Clinton with voter motor. Or motor voter, I guess they called it. Easy registration at your local DMVs and so forth. Even back then, I and a handful of others said this is a disaster. Because the Democrats never stop. Give them a little crack in the door and they kick it wide open. They kick it wide open. Everybody was sitting on the edge of their chairs just about 30 minutes ago. Will Joe Biden be able to give a decent speech in front of NATO? Is this what it's come to? If he can give a speech, one decent speech out of ten, then he's presidential material. Is this what it's come to? We've had a complete cover-up here. And it's still, you can see its remnants, or its entrails. It's still going on. It's still going on. And as I explained last night, the media are trying to decide whether to push him out or get behind him. And the media are split, and the Democrats are split. Because the issue is power. I see some of our friends have now mentioned it on TV, on radio, and even in their social media. It's a good thing they listen. But it's the truth. And we also know the country hasn't been run by this president. It's been run by some kind of a cabal. 
And we further know that Kamala Harris and the cabinet have no intention of following the Constitution and the 25th Amendment. 